The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. You take a look in Brooklyn. Okay. There's a curious thing that happens every summer. The people, uh, they exodus, right? Mass exodus. They go to the country. They leave the marble floors, the granite uh, uh, sink tops and everything else, and the decks, and they go to like a little uh, bungalow up in the Catskill somewhere. Now, not everybody was in favor of this because the wives and the children leave during the week. Maybe it's good for Sholem Bias, but the husbands stay home. The Satmar of Zechit Sadiq Lebrocha was not in favor of that. And he brought Psukim why he didn't like. He liked that the family stayed together. Anyhow, what happened is there was a certain family and the wife and the children decided to go to the mountains. And the husband was there for the week. It was a nice July evening. And the husband decided, you know, he's a from guy, he's a religious man. But he decided he has a certain desire. He liked to go to the show. Like to go and see the show. It's interesting. No one's home. It's boring. You know, it's like a little bit lonely altogether. And he always wondered, you know, the show never went, never would think about going. But everybody's away. It's not so simple. Person needs a mashkiach. Tovim shnayim mino echad. So he decides he's going to go to the theater. <laughs> he can't go to the theater in Borough Park. No way. I mean, come on. So he decides he's going to go out a little bit. He'll take a trip and he'll go to the theater. So he took a trip. He went out. It was, you know, way out there. He goes to the theater, to the box office in the front. He wants to pay his money. So they say, uh, we're sorry, but there's an hour and a half's wait until the next show. <laughs> his muzzle. <laughs> hey, got to wait an hour and a half. Okay, hour and a half. Hashem is already sending him messages, you know, like, you don't got to go to the show tonight, it's an hour and a half. He says, okay, I'll wait. I'll wait. He goes back in his car, he figures I'll drive around a little bit. He starts driving around the community, he takes a little bit further, sees what there is out there. All of a sudden, he sees a Jewish cemetery, a Beis HaChaim. Beis HaChaim, okay. He'll go into Beis HaChaim, he'll see if he knows, you know, anybody over there, uh, take a look around. He goes into Beis Achayim and uh, looks around. All of a sudden, he sees a small ohel. He goes there. It's a Kevrit Sadik. Why not? Uh, Kivrit Sadikim is huge. There's a little tillim in the ohel there. He opens up his uh, tillim. He begins davening. Hashem, watch over me. Hashem, I should only do good things. And everything. He's davening. And then he finishes. He goes back out of the cemetery. He goes to turn the car on. Nisim and he flows. The car won't start. He tries everything. The car ain't moving. He starts walking. He looks around for maybe a, a, a living person. No Lebedic Neshama around there. I mean, after all, it's a Beis Achayim, right? Nowhere to go. And he begins looking around and there's nothing. There. And he starts it. Then he lifts up the hood and the carburetor. I don't know anything over there. Whatever. He starts messing around. Nothing. He tries the car again. He gets so tired, he falls asleep. In his sleep, he has a dream. Chalom Chalamti. He dreams that there is someone who looks like a tzaddik. The tzaddik comes over to him. And the tzaddik says, I can tell you one thing for sure. This evening, you will not be in any show. He wakes up. Oh, it's crazy. I had a guilty conscience. I was thinking about it. And I didn't want to go to the show. So I thought about the show. I just had the dream. That's ridiculous, right? So he starts the car. He's trying to start it up. He starts turning it and turning it. It don't go. And he tries everything under the sun. He doesn't know what he's doing. He goes to the street. And he tries to flag people down. There's nobody even driving on that night. Hashkocha. Hashkocha el yoyna. He goes back in the car. And he waits and he waits. And he's so tired. Falls back asleep. person came to him one more time in the dream. And he says to him, You were by my kever tonight. I am maftiach. I promise you, you will not be in any show tonight. He wakes up in a cold sweat. He says, Okay, I'm guilty. I have charata, kabol al I'm not going to the movie. I'm not going to the show. I'm not doing nothing. Hashem, please, charata al I'm sorry that I ever came to this place. 
turns the key, presto. Motor starts up, he goes. Next day, he wondered, wait a minute, who was that Sadik that I went to the other day? Takes another trip out to the base of Chaim. Sees that it's the kever of the Tselem Arov. If you drink Kedem wine, so you will know that the Tselem Arov, Zechut Tzadik Levracha, was the one that was very careful to give the Ashkacha on the Kedem wine. And he was a great Tzadik. I had the privilege of meeting him one time uh, when he came to the Sklena Rebbe, Zechut Tzadik Levracha. I had the great privilege to be in his presence. So, he takes a look, he sees the kever, marks it down, comes back home, goes into the Svarim store. You got a picture of this Salem or uh, Tzadik, whoever he is? Takes a look at the picture, Chapsa Pachad, almost falls over. The same person that appeared to him in the dream was the same likeness of the picture. Hashem helps us that we never go far. Hashem helps us that we will always be under His protection. If we go too far away, the chain, the tradition, the shasheres azov, the shalsheles, is always there. It's a chain that connects us to Avinu Shabbat Shemayim, and that never, ever lets us go. That's the beauty of Klau Yisrael, that throughout, no matter what happens, there is always the Yad of Ashkoch Protis that guards us and that watches over us no matter what we do. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to Inspire.org.